everybody. I don't think Tim got quite enough credit for the saying that there's no trees in the middle of the estuary. No, yeah, <laughs> very flat. <laughs> Um, okay, so hi, I'm Nick Appiard from, from ESA. I'm responsible for the, uh, the, the downstream services and applications across the whole of ESA. Um, so this is very pertinent for me, so it's, uh, it's great to have the opportunity to talk to you there. Um, Sam has given the talk that I would normally give, but I anticipated that that would have happened, so I've prepared something slightly uh, complementary to that. Um, but let's start off with, uh, with, with ESA and our peasants in the UK. Um, if you peek out through the windows just over here, you'll see this building. Um, it's Exat, um, and that is the European Centre for Space Applications and Telecommunications. We're a very acronym-laden kind of industry, um, so uh, it's worth unpacking some of these as we go along. Some of you may have been to STEC over in the Netherlands, where part of my team also is, and the tech bit there is, uh, is the technology. Um, so this building, it's not very old, it's only been there three years. Um, and it was set up with a lot of support from UK Space Agency and UK government, specifically to anchor the ESA's presence in the UK, particularly around the more business-focused aspects of what ESA does. That's what UK, that's UK's play. And the way that ESA is funded for a lot of our programs is that we go, we pass the hat around all the countries, and we say, we, we, we ask each country, what, what is it that your, your priorities are, put the appropriate amount of money and funding into the appropriate hat. We do this every three years. Um, as a result of that, as the, uh, the budget for downstream applications, 45% of the budget that I have to spend across 19 countries of Europe is in the UK. UK is making a big play on this. And because of this, we are going to need a lot of people, a lot of small companies, a lot of graduates to be populating this industry. We've got to be stimulating a lot more activity than we already have. Um, finance sector has woken up to this. Um, the small business and entrepreneurship sector is starting to wake up to this. And you start to see clustering activities like the campus here, where space companies are, are uh, coming together and uh, really starting to feel like a community uh, led through the UK. Um, some of you may have come across uh, Magli Vessier, who's been the, the leader and pioneer of this kind of activity and has led uh, uh, ESA's telecoms program for past few years and is responsible for the, for the building there. Um, my part of it then, as I say, is the, is the space applications bit. Um, and so all of that is, is led from this building in the UK and in the UK for the reasons I've said. But is a lot bigger than this as well. And it's worth just uh, uh, taking a little bit of pause and talking about some of the other things which are going on. Um, so yes, the applications piece, and that's the reason why we're here and things are together as together. But we're full spectrum uh, space agency. Uh, it's a very complicated organisation with a lot of different things going on. I want to just scratch the surface of some of these things, and there really is only time to just scratch the surface. The so science and exploration things, some of the things we need to do in order to enable some of these other things to happen, and then uh, we also have quite a lot of activity around safety and security, which is also downstream applications, but uh, uh, on a less commercial basis. Um, for a lot of people, a lot of young people, it starts with the deep space science. This is what draws people in in the first place. This is what they want to get engaged with. This is, this is the, the cool fun. I want to do stuff about space. Stuff. This is the PR department, from my point of view. It's a very expensive PR department, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we have all of these different missions in Bill, um, and anybody, any of your students who are taking a, a, a deep interest in, in any of these, uh, you can build a 30-year academic career around any single one of these. Um, and so this is one of the possible career paths for the students uh, that, 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 that are in front of you. Um, because these, this, these are, um, this is new groundbreaking science activity which can only be done with, uh, with, with space missions. Uh, and they take a long time to build, long time to plan, long time to build, long time to launch and get to where, where, where they are uh, going. And then they have a small window of data collection, and then they have a long time of uh, data analysis. Um, one which is uh, particular current interest in, the, in, our, in our cycle we're in at the moment, we're going to Mars, um, and we're going to land this little beast, which is being built in Stevenage. Um, and we'll drive around a bit. 
take some soil samples and uh, take some air samples and uh, and do some science around this. This is the kind of stuff that, that we need to be talking about to, to inspire the uh, inspire the next generation as they come through. But to look at it from my point of view, my brief is to find the commercialization opportunities around this. And the bulk of that, as uh, Sam said at the beginning, is, is around digital services, is digitalization of, of things on Earth. So I'm going to try and bring us in towards that. The science missions, the technology missions, the deep space activity is all founded on the supply chain of technology. And, and very, very often this is cutting, cutting edge stuff. So whether it's materials and manufacturing techniques, um, whether it is uh, data science and algorithmic kind of uh, capabilities, um, whether it's electronics, signal processing, antennas, lots of different technologies are being assembled into, into the kind of systems we're talking about here. And they're all right at the edge of uh, what is capable, at least they start that way. And then 10 years later, we launch them. Um, so, and from that, there is quite a lot of opportunity to repurpose those technologies into other things which are directly useful on the ground. So there is this te technology transfer flow, which we're trying to stimulate as part, uh, uh, ancillary to what we're doing around downstream applications. Um, trying to find customers for this, not just in the space program, but on the earth as well. Um, just to, to have a, an audience of universities here, a little plug for, for something that we're trying to um, get going across ESA at the moment now, is to actually make bilateral partnerships with single universities, um, whereby we, we set up a small facility inside a, a university, a research university, many of you are researchers well as teaching universities, um, populated with uh, your students and your uh, teaching staff, faculty staff, and also with our own experts, and turn it into a small research environment within the confines of the university. If you're interested in exploring that possibility with ESA, then come take the opportunity to talk to me over lunch, and we can we can go into that. Um, and it can be on any any of the topics um, that that ESA is concerned with. So wherever our overlap, uh, uh, we have an overlap of interest with uh, with the service, then, then come talk about. Coming in then closer towards towards the Earth, we talk a lot about satellite applications here. Uh, it's very often forgotten that we have one big, expensive, and habited uh, satellite going around uh, in the in the 400 kilometer low Earth orbit belt. Um, there's a lot going on on that still. It's uh, um, and including there are scientific facilities and research uh, facilities uh, on on the space station there, and this is where we start to see some more commercialization opportunities coming in because those research facilities, that microgravity lab space um, with people to turn the, uh, to, to turn the knobs and dials if necessary, that's available for hire. <laughs> so if you are thinking of developing you know, some kind of scientific spin-off capability, maybe a manufacturing facility, microgravity, where because you're dealing with, uh, with, with uh, sensitive uh, gravity, so, yeah is a factor in your manufacturing quality, then it is actually possible to get, get access to, to, to space on the ISS on a commercial basis to do this. And again, we have part of our PR workforce here uh, who are <laughs> forever on tour um, helping with this stuff. But most of what we're talking about when we talk about downstream is satellites in Earth orbit uh, which have some technical capability which allows us to generate a service. Um, the big push recently in ESA has been about getting these um, Copernicus and Galileo fleets up under the sponsorship of the European Commission. If you want to talk about that, we'll talk about it offline and not on camera. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, we're adding to the capabilities of, uh, of observation from space. Um, so at the top there is radar satellite. It's, uh, the, the applications we are finding for radar images of the Earth's surface. With, um, and if you added interferometry into this, this is millimeter resolution of change detection of things like ground movements uh, or uh, the roughness of the surface of the ocean, movements of ice, things like this coming out of this. Um, the optical images that we've already uh, seen a fair bit of this, uh, this morning, uh, atmospheric si uh, science sampling, all of this, these data streams, such as petabytes of data, and then the question is, 
okay, that's great, we've got petabytes of data. What are we going to do with it? And that's now the big challenge, is how do we turn all of this, this raw data resource, which is, which is becoming available, how do we turn that into services? And that's the commercial opportunity. That's where the businesses are coming from. Um, enabled as well by the ability to connect to anywhere around the Earth through the communication satellites and know where things are on the, on the, uh, the planet's surface through the, uh, through the GNSS navigation satellites. Um, so you put those things, these things together, they, uh, they, um, they provide the underpinnings of being able to deliver a service either to anybody on any part of the, the Earth's service, including very remote areas at sea, in moving aircraft, anywhere you can think of, which ground-based technology can't, uh, can't often do, but also to extract information about anywhere on the Earth's surface and analyze it remotely, which is uh, what Tim was talking about. Um, so the first technical problem then that we need to then deal with is that's an awful lot of data. So in terms of skilling up the future workforce, this is probably need number one. We need data scientists, we need AI, we need visualization, we need all of that kind of, the ability to, to turn that into something which is useful. Um, so, so if you're looking for skills requirements, I would put that right on top of the list on the, on the engineering side of things. And then the other, facet of what you need in order to turn this into something useful is the customer perspective and the user perspective of this. So we need people who are going to be able to go out into different contexts of, of use, of commercial activity, and understand what is needed and match that up with what is possible. So these kind of business skills, design skills, user-led service design, which, which meets the technology coming the other way and, and needs to knit together. Those, those are the two two areas where we really are going to, we're going to be looking for a lot of, a lot of people to come into the industry. Um, so that brings us the end then to my own area of responsibility in ESA and the reason that we're, we're here um, uh, talking about downstream. Downstream is where the big business opportunities are. Um, largely at the moment this is in the form of digital services provided to government customers and institutions, um, um, provided to industry to improve the operations and productivity of different industries. That might be agriculture, it might be fisheries, it might be transport, it might be infrastructure of different kinds, energy for example, um, or direct to the public services on your mobile phone which you carry around with you, um, which, which plug you into this, this, data, this worldwide data infrastructure. Um, uh, uh, any purpose we can think of, really. We're kind of starting to take for granted that, that we can put ourselves onto a map immediately and, and populate uh, our surroundings with, with, uh, with intelligence about what's going on around us. A lot of that is the satellite services which have been moved into, into, uh, into our handsets. Um, what ESA is uh, contributing to all of this, we're a funder. Um, typically, we uh, are looking to fund business development and therefore we're asking businesses and industry to take a share of responsibility for the risks on this. So we typically fund half of the cost of the project and ask industry to go and find the other half. That shows that they're serious and they really are businesses. Um, we offer our own expert consultancy. We uh, attach one of our, attach one of my team to every project. Um, and they are um, working with the team on the project proposals uh, and the project planning and the project delivery all the way through and guiding them towards uh, using, using the experience we have of hundreds of projects. Um, and increasingly we're getting into the area of that actually supporting the businesses because it's not sufficient to have a product proposition, service proposition developed. You, we also need to have a business who can deliver that out to the customers. Um, so we are, for example, working with venture capitalists and, and uh, business support agencies and, and bringing them into the room and say, so we'll take responsibility with public funds to fund half the project. Industry businesses need to take responsibility for the other half, but we can help with that. We can we can we can encourage the uh, the investment community to take an interest in the second half. Those businesses also need a lot of expertise to feed in. Nobody has a um, has, has a complete uh, command of the expertise which they need, which means they need a lot of research collaborations. 
And again, this may well be where, where your, uh, your investors come into play. Um, we uh, have yet to uh, have my team look at a sector of the economy and come back and say, there is nothing you can use satellites for yet. <laughs> so we're going around every sector and subsector of the economy one by one and saying, hang on a minute, what about financial services? How are we going to use satellites in financial services? Oh, well, actually, the insurance industry has a, a wealth of opportunities. Um, and indeed, even the, uh, the financial trading uh, system, uh, who need very accurate clock signals all around the Earth. Oh, look at that, they're coming off the, uh, uh, the, the GNSS satellites. So almost anything we look at, we're going after the biotech industry now. And a lot, there's a lot of stuff about resource management, waste management, and logistics around that industry. So there's, there's a, the, uh, the field of play is the entire economy. And the capability comes down to three, four, five fairly discrete and clearly defined um, space and satellite capabilities. Um, so this is, this is an enormous and rich field. If you end up with the capabilities in here, then you've got a lot, large field of, of play to work with. Um, just to finish, I can't... Uh, let you out of the room without plugging our graduate program. Um, once a year, we call for uh, what we call young graduate trainees. So this is one or typically one or two year placements inside ESA in one of our establishments, working in one of our teams. I have six young graduate trainees working in my team at the moment, but working on different aspects of ESA's uh, activity. Um, and if you add up the whole list, there's a couple of hundred of these every year, these opportunities. So if you are training up people towards um, careers in this area, um, then ESA is, is a very good induction point for them. And with that, I'll close and uh, there you go. Thank you very much.